ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. This video is about the filter context and it's part of a series of videos where we introduce theoretical concepts in a simple yet precise way. These videos do not contain useful code. You are not going to learn something that you can use tomorrow morning in your next report. Here we talk about the foundation of DAX. We already recorded a video about the raw context. Now, this video is all about the filter context. And remember, it's important to understand in a deep way the difference between the raw context and the filter context. Every DAX newbie at the beginning does not have a clear picture, a clear understanding about the two evaluation contexts. And the reason is uh, the concept is uh, kind of cloudy at the beginning. And more important, you do not understand how relevant it is to understand what happens in the raw context, what happens in the filter context, and the difference between these two concepts that have nothing to share. The raw context is not the filter context, and the filter context is not the raw context. With all that said, I don't want to explain everything in the introduction. So let's jump to Power BI and let's start understanding what the filter context is in a bit more practical way. Let's start. In order to understand the filter context, I'm going to analyze a very simple measure, the sales amount that I use in nearly all of my demos. In this, this Power BI file contains our usual Contoso model. And we do have the sales amount measure here. Sales amount does nothing complex. It introduces an iteration through some X, it scans the sales table, and then it computes quantity times net price. So uh, the value of the quantity column is multiplied by the value of the net price column. And remember, this is happening inside an iteration that some X starts over sales. Therefore, we do have a row context in this line that gives me access to the quantity column and to the net price column. That is for the row context. If you are not familiar with the row context, go back to the row context video and see that again until you clearly understand that we do have a row context here. Now, it is important to understand what is this code computing. We know it's iterating over sales and performing a multiplication row by row, aggregating the values later by using a sum. But which rows is it scanning? If we look at the code, it's just iterating over sales. So a first answer would be that, well, it's scanning the entire sales table. And that is exactly what is happening. If I place uh, the, the measure inside the matrix, as I'm doing here, you see that it computes uh, the sales amount for the grand total, 12 million. So. Now, how come if our description is correct, how comes that uh, the measure computes uh, different values if I place something on the rows? If I take the brand and place it on the rows of the matrix, you see that the same measure is now computing different values. It's computing the sales amount for a datum. It's computing the sales amount for Contoso or the sales amount for Proswear. Each row has a different value. Therefore, we cannot say that the measure is scanning all the rows. What is happening here is that the matrix, the Power BI matrix, creates a filter context, a filter on the model that filters only one brand, and then it computes the measure. So when we are in this row, Contoso, what the Power BI uh, tool is doing is creating a filter context over Contoso, and then it's invoking the measure. The measure iterates not all the sales, but only the Contoso sales, or the Litware sales, or the Prosware sales, or the phone company sales. Whenever there is a filter on the brand, our measure does not scan the entire sales table, but only the rows that are visible because of the filter on the brand. Therefore, a correct way of reading this measure is not that it's iterating over all sales. It's iterating over all the rows in sales that are visible in the current filter context, whatever the filter context is. And then, once the scanning is happening for only the visible rows, then it is computing quantity times net price. The filter context is always there, and the filter context can be created by Power BI. Remember, the filter context is a filter 
that exist around your code. Whenever you reference a table, whenever you perform a calculation, that happens in a data model that is being filtered by the filter context. You might have no filter context, like for the grand total, where we actually compute the grand total, but every individual row of a cell exists in a filter context that filters a portion of the entire data model. The filter context is always there, and each cell of the matrix has a different filter context. That depends on how you created your matrix. In our example, we are slicing by brand. But what happens if I place the year on the columns? I can go on the date, take the year, drop it on the columns, and now you see again all the numbers are different. The reason is each individual cell, like this one, has now two filters. One is Fabrica, that comes from the rows, and from the columns we have 2020. Therefore, that is the value of Fabrica 2020. Before we move further, I want to explain you one mistake that most newbies do at the beginning. They confuse the row context and the filter context because they think in terms of matrix. Now, if you focus on a row of the matrix, like this one, Contoso, that looks like a row. And you might tend to think that we do have a row context because we are in a row of the matrix. Unfortunately, that is wrong. A row of a matrix is not a row context. A row of a matrix defines a filter context. If you think about the number of rows that are being aggregated here, there are actually a lot, not only one row. There is one value for Contoso, but a lot of transactions that all happens under the products that exist in Contoso. It's not one row of a table. It's a selection of one value for a column that defines a set of rows that is being filtered by the filter context. So the filter context is always there and it is created by the matrix. An intuitive way of thinking about that is that Power BI actually creates a filter for each cell and then it computes the values. Things are actually a bit simpler and at the same time compli more complicated than that. What Power BI does is creates a query that in turn executes the code in a filter context. Let me show you that. If we look at the query that is being executed for this matrix, we need to launch Performance Analyzer, start recording in order to refresh the visual and grab the query that is being executed. We can then look at the code in DAX Studio. Okay, just a second that I open DAX Studio in the right place and we paste the code. Now, this query is kind of complex, but it's actually much simpler than that. We can get rid of all the useless parts and the useful part of the query is only this initial part. We have summarized columns, also the rollup at the subtotal is not actually useful. I mean, it is useful for the subtotal, but now that we are learning the basics, we can make it a bit simpler. So it summarizes column by product brand, date year, and computes the sales amount, which is our measure. We can also remove the measure and replace it with the code. So let me search for the sales amount definition, copy this code, and we place it here. So we have a better picture of what is being executed. What does summarize column does? Summarize column creates a temporary table containing product brand and date year, all the combinations of brand and year. And then while scanning this table containing the combination of brand and year, it generates a filter context containing the current brand and the current year. And then it computes this expression. So our sum x is being computed in a filter context with the current brand and the current year. Therefore, these sales are the sales visible in the current filter context, that is the sales of the current brand and year. Then we did have roll up at the subtotal that adds further rows to compute the subtotals. So different filter contexts to compute the subtotal by row, the subtotal by column, and then the grand total at the end of the matrix. So the filter context is a filter that is being placed on the model 
and mostly it is created by the visuals in Power BI. Actually, understanding the filter context requires you also to understand the calculate function, and we will not have time to describe calculate here, but I just want to show you in a very quick way how you can use calculate to change the filter context, so to drive the calculation in a different area. Let me show you that. We can create a measure that computes the sales only in Europe. In order to place a filter over Europe, we need to filter the continent that exists in the customer table. So I can create a new measure. Let's do that. And we call it Europe Sales, where we use Calculate. We call Sales Amount. Remember, Sales Amount is the measure we have seen so far. And Sales Amount computes its value whatever the filter context is. Calculate lets you change the filter context and say I'm only interested in rows where the customer content equals Europe. What happens is that Calculate starts, it adds to the filter context a new filter for the customer continent and then it drives the calculation. I can format this as a decimal number Look at the numbers right now. The grand total is 12 million and we have 31.58.43. But if I remove sales amount and I replace it with Europe sales, you see that all the numbers are different. Because now what is happening is that still sales amount is the final measure being executed. But it will be executed in a filter context that contains the continent because it has been created by the measure. The measure places a filter on the continent. Plus, we do have a filter over the brand and we have a filter over the year. All these columns being filtered, they create a single filter context under which the measure sales amount is being computed. And I know I'm repeating myself, but when sales amount iterates sales, it will only see the sales in Contoso 2020 Europe. So that's the power of the filter context. The last detail that I want to show you is that the filter context is set on tables and then it follows relationships. Look at the code we wrote here. We are computing customer, we are computing sales amount, adding a further filter that says that the customer continent needs to be Europe. Now, if we look at the data model, I have here a layout that only contains product sales date and I also need customer. So let me rearrange this a bit. We have a filter over the product, over the product brand, a filter over date, the date year, and we have a filter over customer continent. What I'm filtering is not the sales table, I'm filtering the product, the customer and the date table. The filter context is automatically propagated from a table to another following relationships. And the filter context by default goes from the one side to the many side. You can also see that if you look at a relationship, here we have the relationship, and there is this tiny arrow at the center of a relationship that indicates the propagation of the filter context. The filter context goes from date to sales. And if we look at customer, for example, we have the relationship here. We look at the arrow that says that the relationship goes from customer to sales. That is the reason why we can scan the sales table with the filter of a product, of a customer, of a year, over any related table. And the filter context automatically propagates to the target table that in our case is sales. Remember that you have the option of changing the direction of this arrow. You cannot actually change the direction. You can make it unidirectional as it is or transform it into a bidirectional relationship so that the filter context goes both ways. Don't do that. Enabling bidirectional cross filter is dangerous. It automatically enables the propagation of the filter context in both directions, but you are at risk of ambiguity, you are at risk of uh, slow measures of wrong numbers. So do not use bidirectional cross filter unless you are familiar with that and you understand what it is. For now, the goal of the video was introducing the filter context. Then we explained just a teeny bit, tiny bit about uh, Calculate. But in order to understand what Calculate does and all the details, uh, that will require another video. As you have seen, only theory during these videos.
we created the first video about the filter, the row context, and now this is a video about the filter context. We still need to understand the other different topics about the theory of DAX. We will need to understand a bit better Calculate, what it does, how it works, and how Calculate changes the filter context, and then we will need to introduce context transition. Remember that all these concepts, they need to be learned really well and together. You cannot understand context transition unless you understand Calculate. You cannot understand Calculate unless you understand the filter context. And in order to understand what the filter context is, you need mostly to understand the difference between the filter context and the row context. Once this layer, this foundation layer, will be clearly understood, then you will see that DAX will have no secrets. But we still need to do several steps. That is going to happen in the next videos. Enjoy DAX!